Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with an illustration of Interest Rate Parity Theorem. This is a classic idea in finance that gives us a way to theoretically link two currency exchange rates. On the one hand, we link the spot exchange rate. That's just the exchange rate we can use today to exchange one currency for another. For example, dollars to euros or euros to dollars. The interest rate parity theorem links this spot currency exchange rate with the forward exchange rate. That's the exchange rate we can get if we enter into a forward contract that guarantees delivery of the currency to us in the future. So it's the it's also an exchange rate, but it's a forward contract to guarantee that exchange rate in the future. So the interest rate parity theorem links these two and the basic idea to illustrate for example assume we're an investor and we have 100 euros and we're going to invest for a single year and we have two choices. One choice here illustrated on the left is to exchange those euros into dollars today so we'll do that based on the spot currency exchange rate and then invest those dollars at the US interest rate. I'm in the US, I'll call that the domestic rate. That means at the end of the year we'll end up with a certain number of US dollars. Alternatively, with the scenario on the right, I can take the euros and invest them at a rate that is I'm going to call the foreign rate. So I'll keep the euros denominated in euros. I'll get the foreign interest rate and then at the end of the year I'll exchange them into US dollars based on the forward exchange rate and because it's a forward I can lock that rate in at the beginning of the year and so I'll also into that scenario end up with US dollars at the end of the year. Now if I'm an investor and there's a no arbitrage uh, assumption here I should be indifferent to the choices making some simplifying assumptions and therefore I should expect the same number of US dollars in either scenario whether or not I take those euros in on the one hand exchange them into dollars today and invest domestically or keep them foreign invest them in foreign at the foreign rate and then convert them to dollars at the end of the year I should expect the same value that no arbitrage idea allows us to link the spot exchange rate with the forward exchange rate. Given that we do need to know these two pieces of information, the forward interest rate, I'm sorry, the foreign interest rate and the domestic interest rate. So just to illustrate, if this is the 100 euros and we're going to talk about a one, we're going to invest for one year. If I take the scenario on the right, if the foreign rate is 3%, I'm going to end up with a little bit over 103 euros at the end of the year and I used continuous compounding so all I did there was take the euros that I started with and multiplied by the exponential function that's e raised to the rate so we're continuously compounding times the number of years we're doing that so that's the number of euros I have at the end of the year based on the foreign rate. And then those will get converted based on the foreign exchange rate and that's going to give me the value of dollars that I have at the end of the year. But I'll come back to this part. Let me take the alternative scenario where I take the 100 euros and I assume a spot exchange rate. So I try to be pretty accurate here and it looks like one euro purchases about a dollar fifty seven or dollar fifty eight approximately so that means my one hundred euros can be converted to one hundred fifty seven dollars and eighty cents based on the spot currency exchange so now I'm in dollars and I have a domestic rate I just made this up of four percent and now I invest the 
domestic currency at the 4%. And again, I did continuous compounding here, so I just took the $157.80 that I have after I converted the $100 at the spot of 1.578. And I'm going to continuously compound, so that's E raised to the rate multiplied by the number of years I'm continuously compounding gets me at the end of the year I'm gonna have one hundred sixty four dollars and twenty four cents and so if we go over here to the forward rate I solved for that actually because I needed the to get the same value at the end of the year one sixty four twenty four divided by the amount of euros I'm gonna have at the end of the year if I take the alternative path that's the link right there that tells me this is the implied forward exchange rate, a dollar, uh, one dollar and fifty-nine point four cents. If that if that is the forward rate, then we can see here, if I have euros at the end of the year, under this scenario, this path of one hundred three oh five multiplied by that forward rate, then I get one hundred sixty four twenty four. So I solved for this forward rate that guaranteed under this scenario where I invest at the foreign rate, I'm going to end up with the same value at the end of the year, $164.24. Now I've connected, let me just say again what I've connected, the spot currency exchange rate, the forward exchange rate, and the domestic interest rate, and the foreign interest rate. And so formulaically what I did here is applied this formula here on the left. Let me go down just one more right here, which says this is the interest rate parity theorem. This says the forward exchange rate should be equal to the spot exchange rate multiplied by the exp e raised to or the exponential function of the difference between the domestic and the foreign rate multiplied by the number of years. And so we can see here I've applied this formula right here. I take the spot times the e raised to the difference between the rates multiplied by the number of years. And that in fact did give me the implied forward rate. That's one dollar and fifty nine cents approximately per one year unit of euro. And you can see it gets the right example. The final thing I'll say is I did this under continuous compounding. Sometimes you'll see it under the formula in this format, which is an annual compounding assumption. It's really the same exact idea. Just here we're compounding annually, and here we're assuming a one-year period. I don't even have any time period in that. But here if I applied this formula, which is right here under annual compounding, I get, you can see, a slightly lower implied forward exchange rate. So this is David Harper of the Bonnock Turtle. Thank you for your time.